My name is Ina Sarah, Vice President and Office Manager at Portage Community Bank. Welcome to the ABCs of Money Management. During this presentation, we will discuss financial products, services, and providers. We will discuss how your needs should be determined which financial products, services, and providers you select. We will also discuss the general process of opening a savings or checking account, and then how to manage those accounts. Let's get started with identifying financial institutions and learning the differences between banks and credit unions. Banks and credit unions are financial institutions. They offer a wide range of products and services to help you manage your money. Financial institutions accept deposits and loan money. They also offer checking and savings accounts and other products and services. Banks and credit unions are similar, but they do have some key differences. Banks have customers, credit unions have members. Credit unions are not-for-profit owned by their members. Banks are owned by shareholders, which means they are for-profit businesses. Products and services that financial institutions offer can differ. Most will offer at least one basic checking account and savings account product, but other products and services may vary, such as the option to access your account on a mobile device or the availability of ATMs that you can use for free. Banks and credit unions are regulated and insured to keep your money safe. The Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, or FDIC, is an independent agency of the United States government. It protects the funds depositors place in FDIC-insured banks. FDIC deposit insurance protects you if the bank fails, meaning that it is closed down by the government. The FDIC insures deposit accounts at banks, including savings accounts, checking accounts, and certificates of deposit. It also insures cashier's checks, money orders, and other official items issued by an FDIC-insured bank. The FDIC provides insurance of $250,000 per depositor, per FDIC-insured bank, and per ownership category. Financial institutions may offer access through retail locations or branches, automated teller machines or ATMs, customer service phone numbers and email, websites that offer online account access, mobile banking services. However, if you have a situation to where you would need accommodations to access the services, let your bank know and they will provide you with the information as to how they are able to meet your need. Financial institutions offer three general types of products and services. Deposit products, such as checking and savings accounts, credit products, such as loans and credit cards, other products and services, such as cashier's checks. Deposit products include savings accounts, checking accounts, certificates of deposit, and money market accounts. With both Checking and savings accounts, direct deposits allow your money to be safely and securely electronically deposited into your account. A savings account is used to set money aside for the future. There are not limits to how often you can deposit into a savings account. However, there are limits on how often you can take money out of the savings account. Money in a savings account earns interest. A checking account is a transaction account. It is designed for individuals to deposit money into it and take money out of it frequently. A certificate of deposit is used to set money aside for the future. It is not the same as a savings account. With a certificate of deposit, you need to keep the money in the account for a certain period of time or you will likely have to pay a penalty or lose interest if withdrawing early. CDs typically offer a higher rate of interest than a regular savings account. Money market accounts usually pay a higher rate of interest and require a higher minimum balance than other accounts, but there is not a time frame that the funds have to remain on deposit. <clears throat> 
With credit products, you can borrow money from a financial institution. You usually pay interest on the amount that you borrow. Credit products include credit cards, which are revolving credit. That means you can borrow money over and over again up to your credit limit as long as you pay at least the minimum payment amount by the due date. Lines of credit, which are similar to credit cards and allow you to borrow money up to a certain amount. Installment loans are repaid in equal payments over a number of months or years. And mortgages are loans secured by your home, usually to purchase it or refinance an existing mortgage, and they are usually an installment loan. Other products and services help you manage your money and send money somewhere else or pay bills. Some of these other products and services are check cashing, money orders, prepaid cards, debit cards, cashier's checks, ATMs or automated teller machines, online or mobile banking, including bill pay, person-to-person -person payments, remittance transfers, or wires. Now let's talk about the steps generally taken to open an account. Some reasons that a person might want to open a savings or checking account could be safety and security by having their funds protected with the federal deposit insurance. The account may earn interest on their deposited funds, the convenience in paying bills or for routine transactions, the ability to build a relationship with a financial institution that may be useful in the future when there is a need to borrow money. Important consumer protections, those that protect you in the event of fraud or unauthorized transactions from your account. We will now talk about the process of opening an account in general. Please know that each financial institution has its own procedures for opening accounts. You can open an account by visiting one of the locations of the financial institution or at times online using a computer or mobile device. With either option, you will need to complete an application. The application will normally ask you for the following information. Your full name, date of birth, address, phone number, social security number, and email address. You will need to provide information to verify that you are who you say you are such as your current state issued driver's license or ID card. You will need an initial deposit to open the account. Again, this varies from institution to institution and by the product requirements. You will need to sign several documents, such as an account agreement and a signature card that will be kept on file with the financial institution. You may need to activate your account tools, such as your debit card, your online access or telephone banking. You will be asked if you want to opt in to a program that will handle overdrafts caused by ATM and point of sale tra transactions. You will then receive information called disclosures, either in paper or electronically. The disclosures explain the key facts that you need to know about the account. If there is something that you do not understand, please be sure to ask questions. The process that we just discussed assumes that the person applying for the account is approved for the account. However, not everyone is approved. Some consumer reporting companies keep track of negative information relating to how consumers use their deposit accounts. Examples of those are check systems and early warning. Financial institutions may use these reports to determine if they will allow someone to open an account. Banking history reports include information on unpaid negative balances on accounts, suspected fraud related to accounts, certain accounts closed by the financial institution due to account owner mismanagement. But you have the right to one free report from each nationwide consumer reporting company every 12 months, and you also have the right to file a dispute to correct any errors. Now that you have the account open, how are you going to manage it? Let's briefly talk about account management. Let's start with savings accounts. Some of the information will be the same, but there are important differences. 
You can use a savings account to build your savings by depositing money into the account and keeping it in there to earn interest. A savings account is designed to save money for the future, not for a high number of transactions. A savings account will generally offer a higher interest rate. When managing your savings account, be sure to read the rules of your account, such as if there are any fees related to that account, if there is a minimum balance or a limit on the number of transactions. Keep track of your deposits and withdrawals by using a paper-based log, an app on a mobile device, or through online banking. Review your account statements. If there are any deposits or withdrawals on your statement that don't look right, or you know that you did not make, tell the financial institution right away. Set up email or text alerts if your financial institution offers them. Stay safe online. Make sure that the websites you frequent are secure and be careful as to who is receiving your private information. Managing a checking account can be a bit different than managing a savings account because a checking account generally has more transactions. Checking accounts are used frequently for multiple transactions, depositing money, paying bills, making purchases, and accessing cash. When you open a checking account, you may get a debit card, an ATM card, checks, or a combination of those items. Keep in mind that an ATM card and a debit card are not the same thing. They are similar in the fact that the funds are taken directly out of your checking account. Debit cards allow you to make purchases without using cash. ATM cards allow you to use, as an, use at an ATM to various account transactions. But you are not able to use an ATM card to make purchases. A check is a document that you complete that tells your financial institution to pay money from your checking account to someone else called the payee. You need to be careful when managing your account of overdrafts. An overdraft is when an account transaction goes through even though you do not have enough money in your account to cover it. There are programs that financial institutions offer to cover overdrafts that occurred while using a debit card or ATM card. Under federal rules, you will have to choose whether to opt into the program. If you opt in, the bank may honor an ATM or debit card transaction that is more than your account balance. Expect to be charged a fee to process each transaction. If you do not opt in, the financial institution will decline your ATM or debit card transaction if there is not enough money in your account to cover the withdrawal or purchase. For checks and other types of payments, your financial institution will choose whether to cover the check or other transaction that would cause you to exceed your balance. If it is covered, expect to be charged an overdraft fee. If it is not covered, the financial institution may charge you a non-sufficient funds fee, and the merchant may also charge you a return check fee. There are other features that are associated with checking accounts to consider. Direct deposit, automatic bill payment, and automatic debit. Direct deposit allows your money to be safely and securely deposited into your account electronically. With direct deposit, there is no need to make a deposit in person. Many employers offer direct deposits for paychecks. You might even be able to arrange for a certain amount of your paycheck to be automatically sent to your savings account. Automatic bill payment lets you schedule and send payments electronically through your financial institutions. Payments set up as a one-time or recurring you can also set up automatic debit, which is when you give permission to a merchant or lender to take payments from your account one time or on a reoccurring basis. The key to using automatic bill payment or automatic debit is to make sure you have enough money in your account to cover your payment when they are made. Some people prefer or need to write checks. 
Whether you plan to write checks or just receive checks, it's important to understand the information that is on them. Let's take a look at this check and identify each part. Number one, this is the name and address of the person who owns the account. So if this were your account, your name would be here. Number two, the date that the check was written. Number three, the number of the check. Number four, pay to the order of. This is the payee, the person or business being paid by the check. That's the person with the right to cash the check. Number five is the amount of the check written using numbers. Number six is the amount of the check written using words. This is sometimes called the legal line. If the amount of the check written in numbers does not match the amount written in words, financial institutions will generally use the amount written in words. Number seven, this is your financial institution's name and address. Number eight, the four or memo line are for your personal notes. Number 10 is the bank's routing number. This is not unique to your account. It identifies the financial institution that, that issued the check. Number 11, that is your account number. Unlike the routing number, this number is unique to your account. It tells the financial institution which account the money comes from. And number 12, again, the check number, but not all checks will have the check number repeated here. Many of these guidelines to help you manage your checking account are the same as the checklist for the management of a savings account. Read the rules of your account, know the fees, how you can avoid them, and other important information regarding the requirements for your account. Keep track of your deposits and withdrawals. Again, there are various ways to do that. You can use a mobile app, your online banking system, another computer program, or simply by using a transaction record. Other ways to manage your account are review your account statements. Make sure that you recognize all transactions and notify your financial institution if you find any discrepancies. Keep track of any holds on your debit card. Set up email or text alerts. Ask about linking your account to your savings account or line of credit to avoid overdrafts. Be sure to protect your debit card or ATM card. Be wary of sharing your card information with others. If you lose your card or it has been stolen, notify your financial institution immediately. And of course, stay safe online. Other tools to use to manage and use your account are ATM cards. They allow you to use an automated teller machine for various account transactions. The money you withdraw comes directly out of your account. An ATM may allow you to do a cash withdrawal, check your account balances, deposit money into your account, or transfer funds from one of your other accounts to another. Debit cards can be used for everything an ATM card can be used for. Plus, it can be used to make purchases. A debit card looks like a credit card because it will have a card network logo such as American Express, MasterCard, or Visa. However, it is not a credit card. When, the, when used, the funds are drawn directly out of your checking account. Person-to-person -person payments. This is a mobile app that allows person-to-person -person money transfers. Typically, users link the mobile payment to their bank accounts or credit cards and initiate transfers of funds to others who are also users of the same app. Every pay-to-pay -pay system works differently. Not all are the same. This is a rapidly changing area. Make sure that you are aware if the app is FDIC insured, if there are fees involved, and more. Mobile 
wallet apps give you the ability to make point of sale purchases with your mobile device. Rather than a debit card or credit card, be sure to keep your device and information secure when using this tool. Remember the key takeaways that we covered. Consider your needs and shop around for financial products and services. Know the products, the general process for opening an account, including options if you are initially unable to open an account, and learn the rules of your account and keep track of how to use it. Thank you for attending the ABCs of Money Management. If you have any questions or need more information, give us a call or visit our website. Thank you.